And I'm hoping y'all digging that music that comes on when my show comes on. My playlist is really, really dope. Um, I love the music that that uh, the city is putting together. And um, man, today I have my special guest in the building. But before we get into that, we're going to get into our hot topic from Deacon T. What's going on, sir? Hey, man, how you doing? I'm doing well today. How are you? Jay, I'm, I'm here, alive, got another day under my belt. Yeah. It doesn't get much better than that. All right now. Do you know what I'm saying? I do. It's all in perspective. You I can do. look at it good or bad. Righteous. You right about that, sir? Yeah, absolutely. What you got for the topic, man? What we you doing? The topic today is it's called The Curse of the Last Word. Mm. You know, sometimes <laughs> I'm guilty, by the way. <laughs> I got to be correct, you know? I got to have the last nibble. I got to have the last text. I got to have the last little something or other on the DM. Mm. Can't leave the heifer alone. You know, it's laying there and it's a little, it's, it's a curse. It is a curse. Mm. My grandfather used to say, do you want to be right or do you want to be correct? Mm -hmm. And there's a big, big, big difference. It is. And, you know, being correct is about being factually accurate, Yeah. which I believe I am. Okay. But that doesn't mean it's right for me to say it. Yeah. That doesn't mean it's my place to say it. It doesn't mean it's my ordination to bring it up or bring it out. And sometimes, you know, we're just better off to let it go. Let 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 the person on the other end think they won something because it does something for them. Let the other person just go on about their life. You know, nobody died and made me the person who's supposed to correct everybody else's incorrect information. Mm -hmm. Nobody made me the sheriff for everybody, right? right? But sometimes we all get in this mode where, and particularly when we're doing it not face-to-face, -face, mm -hmm. because it's real easy for me to just go, hold on, man. And I tap something else out on there real quick that, quite frankly, serves no purpose other than to continue to try to move my agenda forward when, even if I'm correct, I ain't right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't have to be, you don't have to be, none of us have to be right all the time. You know what I mean? Let it go. Yeah. It ain't that important. And what it leads to, it leads to other people having hurt feelings. You lose friends, you lose loved ones, you lose credibility, and more importantly, you have to me, people aren't willing to come to you anymore. People, I think about my children or younger people in particular who don't want to step up and come to me because they think I'm going to have to beat them down with the, you know, the last word by Deacon T. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, it, it, it would pain me to think that someday perhaps somebody really got in a bad situation or really got jammed up when I could have helped them, but they didn't want to call me or hit me up. Because they thought I was going to beat them down so bad, you know, because mm -hmm. I was going to give them the what for and have to have the last word yeah. instead of being a better listener and uh, less of a talker. And so uh, that way, you know, today and I'll close this up. But but but, you know, my, my, I think about my grandparents, how smart they, they are. You know, the, the older I get, the smarter they were. Yes, sir. And my grandmother used to say, you got two ears and one mouth. Mm -hmm. If you use them in that proportion, you're going to be a genius, mm -hmm. or at least you won't show your total ass. Right. <laughs> and, and it's true. And, and sometimes, you know, it's, it's just incumbent on us to be kinder. Yeah. Quit, quit worrying about being correct all the time, you know? I felt that on the way over here today, actually, to be kind to everyone because you don't know what they're going through in their life. Exactly. And so even if you're the one that's going through it, you be kind to the other person because they're not the one who pissed you off. Absolutely. They're not the one in the household that you just ran from. They're not the yeah. one, you know what I mean? Absolutely. At the work, you know, absolutely getting on your, on your back. Absolutely. So, you know, just be kind. So that, I felt that today. Yeah. And so. you know, and you know, it's a, it's a, it's a thing. In, and you said it, we, we say it at church all the time, you know, you don't know what it took to get me here. Correct. You know, we see people on the street, and I just use the weight issue. You see people on the street, you say, man, come on, look at that fat dude. Man. Yeah. You don't know that dude might have just lost 100 pounds Correct. and is on his way to being, you know, all skinny and everything. You, you don't know. I have no idea. And we we can get so judgmental. Yes. And, uh, but I think the church thing is, you know, you don't know what I got had to go through to, just to get here today. Right. <clears throat> and uh, so, uh, you know, it's a... It's the curse of always being right. Yeah. The last word. Curse of the last word. Yeah, let it go, man. That's true. 
Let it go. I love it. Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> y'all know y'all can catch Deacon T right here every Thursday and Friday on Hot Seat with Icy Jones from 12 to 2. Um, and also on Sunday, Modern Word Ministries, 10 a.m. You feel me? You can get them on uh, Instagram at Deacon TLV. You can also get them on YouTube. You feel me? So make sure you check out Deacon TLV, Modern Word Ministries. You type in those things. I guarantee you'll find him and his word. Deacon Tom me? Moore on Facebook and YouTube. Absolutely. 10 a.m. Sunday morning. We bring you a word. It's called Modern Word Ministries for a reason. We try to chop it up with you and keep it real. And I promise you, you will not leave there wondering what it was we were talking about. Absolutely. Absolutely. After this music break, we'll be back with my special guest, Dr. Linda Woodson. Hey, she hey. got some words for us, man. We're going to talk to her and see what's up. You know, she in the hot seat today, so we're going to get a little information and see how we can uh, find out who she is. We'll be right back on the other side of this music break. <laughs> Y'all know who the fuck it is. Once again, Lady Finesse. I'm a cop back. She said I need to get him back in blood. Well, let me cop back. Hey, get this understood. I'm a pretty chick from the hood. Man, I dare a bitch to try me. Yeah, I wish a bitch would. Yeah, yeah, I'm about that. Foreign whips, I'm a cop back. She said I need to get him back in blood. Well, let me cop back. Hey, get this understood. I'm a pretty chick from the hood. Man, I dare a bitch to try me. Yeah, I wish a bitch would. Now let me give a little lecture, I'm really some pressure And dare a bitch to try and play me, I shoot from the neck up At the bank for my checkup, it's by the bag Cause you saying you the baddest, but you looking real drag though Hey, hey I'm a gutter bitch, straight get it off the mother bitch That mouth a little reckless, I'm a socket, straight plug a bitch Pussy so sweet, eat me eight figures a bigger Wanna see what's in your wallet, I'm capital do one nigga Hold up, hold up, wait a minute, he got money, wanna spend it And you niggas is some suckers like a nipple, here's a titty in they mouth just like a denty and my nigga, he's a 10 piece, he's a hoodlum from the briggies. Now free him, you fucking piggies. Yeah, I'm about that. Foreign whips, I'm a cop back. She said I need to get him back in blood, but let me cop back. And hey, get this understood, I'm a pretty chick from the hood. Man, I dare a bitch to try me, yeah, I wish a bitch would. Yeah, yeah, I'm about that. Foreign whips, I'm a cop back. She said I need to get him back in blood, but let me cop back. And hey, get this understood, I'm a pretty chick from the hood. Man, I dare a bitch to try me, yeah, I wish a bitch would. Understood. I'm Trey Bizzle, yep, from the wood, I'm the engine, yep, in the hood, they wanna fuck with me, wish they could, I no matter what the people say, I'ma rock like this anyway, I just seen the ops the other day, and they ain't want no static, I ain't shocked, they see the madness, it's bunny gang, know what's happening, big B's, I keep it bracket, lay on money just like a Mac, I really don't be capping, these rappers be with the actor, since rap became a passion, I'm spanking them like a bastard, gang, nigga, so watch your mouth, nigga, you don't wanna be the next victim that we be after, nigga, told Loki sick, Relax, we bout to map the nigga. X marks the spot when we catch him, we bout to clap the nigga. Yeah, I'm about that. Foreign whips, I'm a cop back. She said I need to get him back in blood, but let me cop back. Hey, get this understood, I'm a pretty chick from the hood. Man, I dare a bitch to try me, yeah, I wish a bitch would. Yeah, yeah, I'm about that. Foreign whips, I'm a cop back. She said I need to get him back in blood, but let me cop back. Hey, get this understood, I'm a pretty chick from the hood. Man, I dare a bitch to try me, yeah, I wish a bitch would. Way I 
I'm gon' pull out my pain. Road to recovery. Yeah. Road to recovery. What does it mean? So many things. So many depending who's telling it. I still have dreams, I'm in screen. I told my psychologist, but she just think I smoke too much tree. She don't see the benefits. I get the green, best on the scene. By way of a telephone. Me and the homie some animals. Hustling flow like a macadoo. She's just telling me watch how I drew this moves. Moderation with the stick and move. Trying to be great like Michael Jordan. But it take work and it take effort. It's some long nights and some hard lessons. Just keep pressing. You gon' find your way. Today's a day. Blessings coming all your way. I speak into existence. We gon' have our way. This by all them nights of ramen that was on our plans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on my road to recovery. I am. Shout out to my niggas out there struggling. Y'all know we will. God gon' make a way, I know it doesn't seem. He gon' make a way. Devil have his way, I'm gon' pull out my piece. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on my road to recovery. Don't get it. Shout out to my niggas out there struggling. God gon' make a way, I know it doesn't seem. God make a way. Devil have his way, I'm gon' pull out my piece, yeah. I know I ain't perfect, I ain't faking that. Faking that. I done did some things and I can't take it back. Take it back. It's a marathon, nigga, take a lap. On the road to recovery, I'm trying to make it back. Oh, most my closest friends turn their backs on me. This ain't theater class, why you act on me? Lost sight of my dreams, chasing cat, homie. Cousin turned fatty, went rack on me. Daddy died and mama had a stroke. I've been through so much that you will never know. Trying to make ends meet, I started selling dope. All these toxic people in my life, I had to let them go. I'm on my road to recovery. Shout out to my niggas out there struggling. God gon' make a way, I know it doesn't seem. Devil have his way, I'm gon' pull out my piece. Yeah. I'm on my road to recovery. Shout out to my niggas out there struggling. God gon' make a way, I know it doesn't seem. Devil have his way, I'm gon' pull out my piece. Yeah. Trying to get it with your round, buzz down. If you pussy make the macaroni sound, buzz down. Bitch, buzz down. Yes, buzz down. If you got the flavor in the sound, buzz down. If you got the pack by the pound, buzz down. If you stack it all away from the ground, buzz down. Nigga, buzz down. Yes, buzz down. If she slim, if she thick, if she white, if she gets dick, I don't give a fuck what she can't get dick. Put dick, all in her throat, my nigga, gonna get dick. Hit it, nigga, in the head, and he dead. Hit it, nigga, in the head, if he dead. Hit it, nigga, in the head, if he dead. Hit it, nigga, in the head, if he dead. Hit it, nigga, in the head, if he dead. Hit it, nigga, in the head, if he dead. Hit it, nigga, in the head, if he dead. Hit it, nigga, in the head, if he dead. Hit it, nigga, in the head, if he dead. Hit it, nigga, in that a nigga play me like dusty, rockin' like a mob. My that. niggas gotta get the money, gotta get the cheese. Yeah. I got yeah. a little bitch that's asking me for everything. Oh, no, so I put her on her knees, make her pray for it. Yeah. Baby need a lot of dollars. That. Enough that. wallets to make your baby mama holler. Check. I'm hoping yeah. she's good here like a college. Cause they be really get straight A's. Huh. Why these bitches always A? Hey. In the club drinking Perrier. Got the bottles, I ain't even 21, go. But fuck it, I didn't got in with my ID. Niggas talking shit, I pull up, I'm a snipe. Buzz down if you was raised out of 702. Buzz down if you a bad bitch, straight about the loot. Buzz down if you was raised out of Kalamazoo. Buzz down, yes, buzz down. Baby, buzz down if you a real one from the MIA. Buzz down if you was bred down south in the A. Buzz down if you a throw one out in the bay. Buzz down, yeah, buzz down. Hey, buzz down. If you trapping hard out of town, buzz down. If you trying to get it with your round, buzz down. If you pussy make the macaroni. Sound bust down, bitch bust down, yes bust down. If you got the flavor in the sound, bust down. If you got the pack by the pound, bust down. If you stack it all away from the ground, bust down. Nigga bust down, yes bust down. I've been trapping, I've been grinding for a long time. Long Spot time. a rollie on my wrist and it's not a crime. Not a crime. I was born with the sauce, so I gotta shine. Got shine. the petty on the scene, I need all mine. Right. I 
like my money like my women, yes, all kinds. So bust it up with attitude like you gotta find. Mm -hmm. I throw a hundred like a dollar and I'm not blind. I, I need a bitch to get it popping like it's game time. Let's go. Pop my collar like a dollar. I know it'll get you turned up. Take another swallow. Oh, oh. Other Pat Ron, they gonna bust it open. I bet I make it rain as this bitch if your friend come. Man, All the things she'll do for a Klondike. Klondike. I really mess my ex bitch, she a Blondike. Yeah. Sitting on these band aids, get my health right. Uh -huh. I thought a whole lot of money make the hoes fight. Hoes Bust down, if you trapping hard out of town, bust down. If you trying to get it with your round, bust down. If you pussy make the macaroni sound, bust down. Bitch, bust down, yes, bust down. If you got the flavor and the sound, bust down. If you got the pack by the pound, bust down. If you stack it all away from the ground, bust down. Nigga, bust down, yes, bust down. If you was raised out of 702, bust down. If you a bad bitch, straight about the loo, bust down. If you was raised out in Kalamazoo, bust down, yes, bust down. Baby, bust down. If you a real one from the MIA, bust down. If you was spread down south, in the A, bust down. If you'll throw one out in the bay, bust down. Yeah, bust down. Hey, bust down. Yes, sir. Welcome back to Hot Seat with Icy Jones right here on Room Service Radio. You know, got some tunes in the building, you know what I mean? Just the groove is always smooth, you know what I mean? You can dance to it, you can rap along with it, man. It's all Vegas in the building. Don't get me wrong, it is some people that aren't from Vegas that are on the playlist, but majority Vegas, and I rep Vegas till I die. Can you tell? Can you see the hat? Yeah, LV, baby, live victorious. So, I got my special guest in the building, Dr. Linda Woodson. How are you? I'm fabulous. Thank you. And you thank look you fabulous. Me. Oh, well, thank you so much. Yeah. That's a good word to use. Fabulous. <laughs> fabulous. Do you say that all the time? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and amazing. It? And amazing. Those are my I'm words. Amazing. Right. I do too. <laughs> I feel that. And do you live that way? Absolutely. I try to. Okay. You know, we all get tested, but I, I try to always have that positive vibe going. That is actually what I wanted to talk to you about. You are a doctor, right? Yes. Dermatologist, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you went to school for it. What school you went to? Um, for um, medical school, I went to University of Southern California. Okay. Um, native from Los Angeles. Okay. And how much school did you do? Did you go somewhere else after that? Or before well, that? before that, um, I did um, engineering at Massachusetts, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. That is a tongue twister. <laughs> you can't say that three times fast. No, you can't. Okay. So, were there times you wanted to quit? Not really. No. You, I, for me, I had been, I was sort of pre-programmed by, okay. by my parents. Okay. And so, you know, as a very young child, you know, my mother put this in me, you know, this is what, you know, you have the brains to do it so you can do it. And so I never really thought anything other than that. Okay. So it would get hard sometimes, but you know, you just kind of one step at a time and you keep moving. But it was never like, oh, I just want to, I, I never got to that. Okay. I, I now I did have other passions, but I never quitting wasn't an option. You quitting know? wasn't an option. It wasn't an option. Hashtag. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay, so how was your high school years? High school years, I was a little bit of an introvert, okay. you know. But um, I, you know, there my my passion was music. Okay. But I found myself. Um, you know, smart enough to be in the, the smart classes, like the math class and science. And so that kind of came naturally for me, even AP. though I was, yeah, <laughs> AP classes, even though I was, um, music was my passion. So I kind of was caught in these two different worlds. Okay. And so, um, you know, I was, I had some friends, but you know, there were plenty of days that I was eating lunch by myself. Really? Just because I was, yeah, I was a little bit of an introvert. Is it because you didn't want to kick it or you didn't want to, like, stray away from getting your grades correct? Or how, why was you, why were you an introvert? I think you know, fitting in, I felt like, you know, I didn't have, like, that outgoing personality. So, okay. I, you know, I didn't feel like I fit in with some of the more popular people. Okay. But I still, like, I was a flag girl, you know, I was on drill team, so I still did the stuff that I liked to do. Yeah. But then when it came to, like, group settings, I was I was comfortable. It wasn't like I didn't like to be around people, but I was also comfortable being by myself. Right, with your own thoughts. Yes. I like that. That's cool. So, okay, you, you were born and raised in L.A.? Mm-hmm. How was that for you? Um, L.A., 
back in those years, it was great. You know, so like now it's a little crazy. Age. She said back in, <laughs> oh, wait a minute, those days. Let me say those days. Yes, those days. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, it was great. You know, what? what's not to like about, you know, L.A. in the like 70s, 80s. You okay. know, it was, you know, beautiful weather, very chill, laid back. No so, gangster stuff going on back in them days. I mean, it, I mean, it was there, you okay. know, but. Um, I guess I was isolated from it, you know, yeah. sort of insulated from from that. Yeah. And so, um, you know, not like today, you know, where right. it is. But know. nobody, nobody like says that everyone has to be a part of that. You know what I mean? A yeah. lot of people say, hey, I wasn't a part of that. You know, I was raised around that or, you know, I, I learned how to maneuver around that. You know, a lot of my guests say that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some of them, yeah, they were a part of gangs and a part of the street culture. Some of them lived in the communities, but they said they had their own group of people that they would roll with. So, you know, because you got to roll thick. Right. Or you might get jumped. <laughs> right. Strip right? the numbers. Absolutely. Strip the numbers. But they weren't a gang. Yeah. They were just hanging out with each other, making sure that they had each other's back, you know? Right. So you're growing up in a certain era where it was the palm trees and it was the cool breeze and it was, you know, cool to go outside and not. Yeah. Okay. You know, we, we didn't really have to worry about that. And that, you know, that was a blessing for sure. Now, were you okay? Cause then the crack era came in the eighties. Like, okay. did you see any of that outside or was it like, uh, cause LA is like one of those big places. I think by then I was well into my, um, like my schooling. Okay. So I didn't really see it. See it. Yeah. I didn't wow. see it. What about on television? Were you like, that's going on outside? Like, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, television, but like when I was really in school, the AIDS epidemic, that was starting to hit. Oh. So that was a big thing then. Wow. And that's like, you can't really step into that world. Like, you got to back away. Yeah, and, and no one really knew. You know, it was just like, um, there was no treatment back then. Yes. So it was just like, if you got AIDS, everybody died. And right. So that was kind of the big thing. Yeah. And so music, when did you start, you know? to even record or like when did you find out you had a voice because if it was all schooling but you had a passion for music what happened well i always managed to do a little bit i was always in the choir okay you know did church choir or school choir oh um but my mother she really stressed you know education first she yeah. was from that era you know you gotta get your education <laughs> so um i did a little bit on the side um recording came much later but adult years, adult years. Okay. Yes. But I, you know, I did when I got to college, I did some, you know, musical theater on campus and, and stuff. So I, I managed to stay in it, even okay. though the the science took the bulk of my time. Right. Right. Understand. So from there, how did you learn? This is what I want to study. Like, was it from high school to college or what happened? Um, as far as music or f no, for the, no, the for science? Schooling, yeah. yeah. Science. So when I was very young, my mother told me I was going to be a doctor. You know, mm. I'm the fourth of six kids. Okay. And so not to take away from my siblings, oh, my older siblings, but um, I had my kindergarten teacher told my mother, you know, oh, she's smart. Okay. So then my mother was like, okay, you're going to be the doctor. And I was like, okay. And so. That was kind of what, what I thought wow. all along. And Dang. so I just did what I needed to do wow. in order to get there. That's, and, that is a home training right there. <laughs> <laughs> like the seed was planted. And so that's kind of what I went with. So you mentioned mom. Did you have mom and dad? I had mom and dad, yes. What, and Go ahead. Oh, so my mom, she um, basically stayed at home. Okay. You know, stay at home mom. Okay. And my father um, was an engineer. Okay. And that's actually how I got to MIT because... Um, he, you know, was engineering and, uh, he was a physicist, physicist actually in the aerospace, mm. um, industry. So he said, well, you're going to go to MIT. And I had never heard of MIT, but when I got there, everyone was majoring in electrical engineering at that time. So I was like, okay, that's what I'll do. I was that kid, you know, yeah. just kind of go easy going, go with the flow. And so I did, um, electrical engineering as my undergrad major, but I also did pre-med at the same time. Okay. So mom and dad embedded this in you. Cause I hear what mom embedded in you. Can you mm -hmm. give me some of what dad embedded in you growing up? Um, he, he was, you know, that father who just, he did what he had to do. He worked. Um, he knew he was supporting six kids. So he went to work and then when he came home, he would help with homework. And then that was kind of his thing. And then summer vacation took us on a road trip. Mm -hmm. That was his thing. Mm -hmm. And so he was, 
he was involved definitely from the support standpoint, mm -hmm. but my mother was the one who like reared us. Yes. You know, she's the one who told us right and wrong. Don't do this. Don't do that. You yes. know, this is how a lady acts and yes. you know, all that stuff. Yes. Now, Hmm. That's like black people, right? These are you mm -hmm. African-American or whatever we want to call ourselves, right? <laughs> yes. Was that what were, were people looking at you like, uh, you know, you think you all that or were people like black people don't do that. Like, tell me about that in your lifestyle and your dad, too. Like, he's this amazing, you know, engineer as well. Well, for for him, he was definitely um, out of his fishbowl. Yes. So when he he was, <laughs> you know, born in Mississippi and then he um went to Wayne State in Detroit okay. um, University. And then at that particular time, they were recruiting black engineers in the aerospace industry. Mm -hmm. So that's how he ended up in um, L.A. And so um, at that time, there was that network. There was that network of, you know, black scientists okay. in the aerospace industry. So there was a lot of support there. OK. And um, in school, um, I actually was bused into, you know, I was zoned for um, Crenshaw if people know LA area, yes. but I um, caught the bus. I was part of the busing program and went to Palisades, which was by the beach. So, um, you know, there was still, there was a, there was a group of, you know, minority students, African-American and Hispanic students that were bused there. So we still had a community. Okay. So I didn't really feel out of place. Okay. That's good. Yeah. That's good. And was it something that, cause you said mom was a stay at home mom. Right? Yes. Is that something you wanted in a husband like or you knew you were going to work to it like he didn't have to take care of you? <laughs> well, that was another thing. My mother was like, you know, you need your education so that you don't necessarily have to rely on a man to to do it. Mm. And I don't know if that's, you know, some baggage she had yeah. or just, you know, she wanted to see her daughters more independent than yes. I guess her generation was. Yes, because it was a generation. Mm -hmm. Right. And you snapped out of that, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So when did, are you married? Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> oh, that's anymore. a whole nother role we can <laughs> travel a down. Another, we that's the second hour, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How long were you married then? I was married 18 years. 18 years. And mm -hmm. you have children? With Three that? children. Three yes. children. And where'd you guys meet at? We met during my dermatology training. Mm. So... He was doc he's a doctor too. Mm -hmm. Wow! And are you guys raising doctors? Um, one, one of the three. Okay. Um, went to med and went into medicine. Yeah. And was it like led by you as well? Like your mom did you? Or how did that work? I just no. I think um, he he chose him, it himself. Okay. Um, so I didn't want to guide them in any way. I you know I stressed education. Okay. And and higher education in college because that's what I'm from. Okay. But as far as what you want to do with that, you know, that's, you got to be happy. You know, okay. you got one life to live. So yeah. whatever it is you do, you want to make sure that you have a passion for it. Okay. I want to go into that though, because divorce is not always easy. Right. And it's can get ugly. How long did, did you ever, did you lose yourself during this time or did you, were you already found? Cause I want to know that. Cause you can give it some, some information to people who have been, in that boat and they lost themselves, especially women. I know women tend to lose themselves. So, oh, so as far as the divorce yes. part, did you, were you already found and you didn't have to find yourself from away from him? You know what I mean? Like now you're single now you're solo. Did you have to find out? Well, the older Linda now? <laughs> <laughs> away from a husband. Well, I, I think that, um, it was probably through that process. Um, through the process. Yeah. Through the process. Um, I think, you know, and, and every relationship is different. Yes. But for me, I felt like I wasn't quite myself in that relationship. And okay. so okay. coming out of it, I was able to get back to me. Okay. I think that was more my story. Yeah. But, you know, of course, it's it's never easy, particularly when there's children involved. Yes. Um, but, you know, prayer, you know, I did a lot of praying, you know, just really trying to you know, I wanted to do what was, you know, right for my children, but then not, not lose myself in the process. Because if you're not your full self, then it's hard to give to other people and, and to give other people your best. And, and I knew that my children deserve the best part of me. Yes. So, yes. 18 years is a long time though. You know what I mean? So 
I'm I'm yes. glad you can speak on that. You know what I mean? That's that's you probably help somebody out there. I hope so. Yeah, absolutely. That's what the show is about. That's why I go deep into things. You know <laughs> okay. what I mean? And so, yes. um, going into uh, being a doctor, mm -hmm. you work. You got your own building. You work for somebody else. How does that work now? Um, right now, I work for myself. I have my own practice. Nice. Yeah. Um, originally, I, my ex husband and I had a practice together. Okay. And then with the divorce, we just had our individual practices. Absolutely. And how did it start out? Like you started out in somebody else's practice? Well, no. When we, um, we trained in Los Angeles okay. and then it was actually never my desire to, to have a practice. So the bit of my mother that I carried with me was, you know, I want to be a dermatologist, you know, so I can have set hours, but then I want to have that family time. And that's why I chose dermatology. And I would have been very happy working at Kaiser or something else where I had, you know, less responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, so we moved here and, you know, there's no Kaiser, you know, there's no. there's a few groups. But um, with a divorce, I either had to, you know, try to find another dermatologist to work with or I had to do my own thing. Mm -hmm. And at the time, the administrator that we had, you know, he said, you know, I'll, I'll help you start your own practice. And that was a blessing because, nice. yeah, I, I, um, I, you know, by then I had worked here for, you know, several years and, and had my own established, um, patients and everything. And, you know, so I'm glad that he was there to just kind of help me guide me through and, and have my own practice. I seen, uh, reading about it, about you 27 years in practice now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then. When did you say, I'm going to go do some music? <laughs> well, that's funny. You know, it's like, you know, God has a way of like bringing people into my life, okay. I, I think. And I actually had a patient who, um, you know, I was t just talking. I like to, you know, talk to patients, find out a little bit about them. And at the time I, I auditioned for musical theater because I kind of dabble in that and I didn't get the role that I wanted. So I was like, oh, I just auditioned and you know, I sing blah, blah, blah. And he was like, well, I'm a producer. And I was like, oh, really? And he was like, let's do a CD. And so mm. um, I was like, OK, I always wanted to do a CD. And so um, that was the first CD that I did, which was a collection of jazz standards. Um, so because I'm more of a jazzy okay. uh, style. So. That's um, how that started. And then um, later on, I, I met another producer who helped me start writing. And um, nice. Chuck Simone, he... Um, What's he, up, Chuck? Yeah, hey, Chuck. <laughs> um, but, like, I don't know if we're going to play that song. But he, you know, we wrote that together. And, and so that's kind of how the music um, recording started. But then I then that performance thing is yes. a whole other... Yes. Issue. You know, it's like you yes. can record in the studio, but then to now get you in have front to of be people, a performing artist. Yeah, not just that's a recording artist. <laughs> that's definitely, you know, been a journey as well. Where is like one of the favorite places you like to perform? I like lounges. Okay. I like. Um, yeah, I mean, nothing is like live music, you know, having a having a band, a rhythm section to work with or at least a, a pianist. So, you know, more intimate settings. You know, I like that. Yeah. What is like the roughest thing I'm going back to your career? Like, did you have any issues with being a black woman in Las Vegas? Not so much. People any push back. Um, people will sometimes be surprised. OK. Um, when they come in, they don't know what to expect. OK. Because I have been here 27 years. OK. So um, I'm often told that I look younger than what my age is. Of course. <laughs> so when they when I walk into the room, you know, they'll be like okay like and they like if they're really curious they'll like say well so how long have you been here in vegas and i know that's like you know their way of saying like how old are you mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. um and i've had patients say like so what are you what do you like what nationality are you yeah you gotta have something else yeah it's like you can't be black because you're you know you're articulate or, uh -huh. or you know so I, I get that from time to time but how does that make you feel do you just blow it off like because you you know at this day i mean i've i've heard it i you know i kind of get the i know what they're what they really want to say <laughs> and so i just kind of you know um, I, you know, I, I answer their question and, you know, I try to be, you know, polite and respectful, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm African American, you know, and, and, you know, thank you. I'm, 
you know, if they say something complimentary or whatever, but yeah. And tell me about what is the practice, like what dermatology, what is the practice of it? So it's, um, skin, hair and nails. Mm -hmm. Um, so a lot of skin cancer here okay. in, in, you know, Vegas, um, you know, right. a lot of senior right. population, people coming from all over. So they've been in the sun, um, you know, acne, right. <laughs> Deacon T's over there raising his hand. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, the typical acne hair, a lot of hair loss issues, um, you know, skin infections. So pretty much. And then cosmetics, too. So cosmetic dermatology is a big part of the practice also. So you do like the lips. Do the lips. The yeah. <laughs> People want to look young. Yeah. Botox injections and yeah. all that stuff. Which one is the bigger part of your practice? Well, I think right now it's still general medicine. So, okay. you know, a lot of skin cancer, okay. um, you know, that's um, the major part. Good. Um, and, and a lot of, you know, dry skin issues, you uh -huh. know, allergy, stuff like that. Okay. I seen the lady on TikTok. She really does the popping. Oh, Dr. Stuff. Pimple Popper. Yes. I don't know her <laughs> real name, but um, yes. You do things like that? Um, Yeah. <clears throat> Not as outlandish as, I oh. mean, they, they look for the, the most right. extreme stuff for her show. Yeah. But people always ask that. Yeah. No, that's that's not what you do. I well, no, I can do. It. We yeah. that is part of what I do. Yeah. But um, you know, there's a lot of other stuff that's not TV worthy. It's not that exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. Did you work on Deacon T? Well, because of HIPAA rules, I'm not allowed oh, to say. Oh, I'm sorry. You can say. You can say. I'm sorry. You can say. That's okay. I don't know my HIPAA rules. You've been released, You've been released from your request. Okay. <laughs> He's been in the office before. Yeah, 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 Got yeah, it. Yeah. He's still here is yeah, what I'm, I'm trying alive. to say. He's alive. <laughs> yes. Survive, man. He went through some stuff. Uh, 2020. Um, it was the skin thing and then your back as well. Yep. Now he's standing up straight, but you know, you got the, the shoulder thing this year, surgery, but God, he's still oh, yeah. up oh, God. kicking yeah. and, uh, he's still on the show. He's yeah. still on Sunday. That's right. Still giving you a good word. Yeah. It's my guy over there. But so, you know what else Linda's not telling you about? Maybe you tell me about like your line, which is part of the business side of your business, you know, like your, uh, skin lotions and all that treatments and, you know, stuff that, that you guys do. Um, we do have um, an aesthetics part of the practice tonight. I don't have my own line, but, um, you know, we have different skin care, you know, it's geared towards, um, you know, either more youthful skin, healthy skin. And we do a lot of treatments for sun damage and things like that. So is it different life for like, like it's, this is probably true, but I'm generalizing. It's, it's more women than men, although I see men growing into it. But is it different for black women come in? Is, is the treatment different? Is, is it, are the things you see different? Do, do black folks uh, experience life, you know, um, differently from a skin perspective? Absolutely. I mean, there definitely are some differences um, for um, African-American black skin, you know, less skin cancer. Not that it doesn't exist, but it is less than um, Caucasian or, or lighter skin. Mm -hmm. um, so when and then depending on the treatments that you're doing, like some treatments, a lot of laser treatments aren't necessarily geared towards um, pigmented skin. So you, mm -hmm. you have to be comfortable with both and know what skin type is going to tolerate, you know, what? Vinilago. Vitiligo, melasma. Um, so you know, mm -hmm. both you know, both all races can experience either. But in a lighter skin person, you're not necessarily going to see the pigment discrepancy. So okay. vitiligo in a brown skin person, you're going to identify it more because there's such a difference between the darker and the lighter skin. Yes. In Caucasian, Caucasian skin, you may not see it as much. Yes. You know, you don't see the difference as much. Yes. Now, uh, what could what did you think about Michael Jackson and his situation <laughs> with his ventilago? Ventilago. Uh -huh. Ventilago. Yeah. What did you think about that? Well, is there such thing as bleaching your skin and do um, people do that? There, and, yes, there there is a such thing. And, you know, I, I, I'm not or was in doc, um, Michael Jackson's doctor, though right. I, I did know his doctor um, back in L.A. Yeah. So, you know, the people will say what they think that he did and yes. whatnot. So yes. I don't know right. what Michael Jackson did, yeah. you know. But there are techniques to depigment your skin. So if someone has vitiligo, and typically if they're 
pigment loss is greater than what their normal pigment is, like fi oh, more than 50% of their pigment is gone, mm -hmm. and they just want to be one color, mm -hmm. you can use a medication to take away the rest of their brown so that they can be one color. That is possible. That is possible, And people yes. do that. People do that, yeah. And, and so you're ethically supposed to do it when in that situation. Like if I had one little light spot on my hand and, you know, I said, well, make me all that color. No. You're not supposed to do that. Correct. But, mm. but if it's more on mm. pigment skin. It's, it's possible. Yes, it is possible. Okay. So <laughs> I, I want to get into some of this music you got. So I'm going to slide this <laughs> ox cord on. Okay. All right. We got Dr. Linda Woodson in the building. Where are you located? I have two offices. One is on um, Tanea and Smoke Ranch. Hey. And the other near Mountain View Hospital. And yeah. the other one is Pecos and Robindale and Henderson. Okay. Good areas. Okay. So. Um, do you go by a different stage name or you just go by Linda Woodson? I just go by Linda Woodson. Oh, that's, <laughs> cute. that's nice. I know. All right, so, so I'm plugged up here. Should I start playing? Let's play it. Let's go. Do I need to turn it up? Yeah. It's right here and right now. I'm not trying to rush anything. This group is so sweet. I'm in this thing. Take it. 
and with Take It Easy on the smooth ride on Hot Seat with Icy Jones, <laughs> Room Service Radio. <laughs> <laughs> you got all mellow out. Yeah. yeah, man, that was good. You got one more, you said. Which, which, who wrote that? Um, I wrote it with Chuck Simone. So that's, okay. Yeah, so, and, and the, the variety, you know, I don't have like one genre, but that one seemed like it fit the station because it's a little, you know. I like it. I yeah, like it. but some is so, more jazzy. Some is I don't know what it is. You don't want to give me one more. Um, give me one jazzy one. Jazzy. That okay. was a sm- really that a was smooth. smooth. Groove. That was smooth. That's like the smooth. Yeah, ride can I see myself stepping through that? You know, <laughs> little bop. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that nine o'clock late night. Yes, right. Hey, how you doing on the Get quiet a, storm? Yes. Yes. Get you a glass of wine. Yes. Kick your feet up. Take it easy. Mm. Linda Woodson. And can they find that? You don't know yet. Huh? Um, <laughs> I think so. I'm gonna look um, for it. I, I I think I know it's on like um like YouTube or something. See, I didn't have this list keyed up, so I'm it's sorry. Okay. It's okay, but I do want one more song from you. Okay. Sure. Let's see. I have like all these tracks on here, so let's see. Put myself out there. You have a YouTube channel. I do. So you were in the Vegas room? I was. September 19, 2020 upload. And then um, I was at uh, Classic Jewel last Sunday. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, I see your page. I'm going to subscribe. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay, so let me see. I hope this is right. What's this one called? Putting Myself Out There. I hope it's the song and not the track. So if, it, if I don't start singing... about him not knowing who you were or what you were about i had to tell my curiosity just to chill out but you know what happens when the heart says yes and the mind says no you do what you want to do you go where you want to go so here we go no holding back i'm throwing it at you i'm coming like that i'm letting you know how i want to go I'm really feeling you So baby what you wanna do I'm standing right here I'm putting myself out there uh-huh. Say what's on my mind Say what's in my heart I felt this way about you Right from the start Now how I came at you May have not been lady like Call it what you want Baby, it's all right Whatever happens after this When it's all said and done You don't have to wonder Where I'm coming from I'm leaving you So what you want me to do I'm standing right here I'm putting myself out there I'm what's on my mind I'm what's in my heart about having a rap verse um i didn't not in this song but there's a song i wrote about my mother that i thought about having like a little rap thing in there you could do one over the top right there right there appreciate that thank you, you for letting a, me play absolutely mm-hmm. you do have a, a jazzy lounge feel mm-hmm. definitely 
a uh, voice that goes over live instrumentation. I like the saxophone playing in the mm-hmm. background. Oh. Was that a live or was that something? That was a, a yeah, that was a real uh, saxophone yes. that, that did that. Yes. You have another performance coming up? I'm going to be at the Nevada Room in November. And actually, I should say before that, um, Nathan Adelson Hospice, they do a doctors in concert event every year to raise money. Wow. And so that's coming up a week from Saturday okay. at the Smith Center. So okay. I'll be part of that program. Amazing. Amazing. So Should October, the November. October 3rd, right? October 3rd at the Smith Center. It's called Serenades of Life. And there'll be several, you know, doctors performing. And then there's a headliner. Um, who be um, who's not a doctor, but you know they usually have a, a big, big name uh, along with that program. Headlining, right? Mm-hmm. So, doctors are musicians. Yes. How many you think on a lineup that you can estimate? Um, well, I've done this for several years okay. now. So there's um, there's a band of doctors, wow. and, you know, with guitarists and you know, piano and, and whatnot and vocalists. Yes. Um, but there's usually about like six six. Um, different performer, different acts, mm. and then the headliner. And that for Sheldon nice. Adelson? Um, um, Nathan Adelson, uh-huh. Nathan, yeah. Nathan Adelson, yeah. Yeah. Hospice. Yeah. That is amazing. It's going to be at the Smith Center, and mm-hmm. it's to raise funds for it. Yes. It's a fundraiser. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and you've done it for several years. Mm-hmm. They reached out to you. You reached out to them. How did that work? Like, I think way back when, I think, I don't know actually how it happened. I think somebody told... Um, Dr. Edward um, Kingsley, he's the director of um, Nathan Adelson, uh-huh. and they may have mentioned to him that I sung, okay. and so I, um, he invited me, and I know it was well over 10 years ago. Nice. And, I mean, it's, it's definitely been, it was long before the Smith Center was even there. Correct, correct. And um, just as a performer, I know I've grown, so I, I, I'm looking forward to being on the stage at the Smith Center at this point. It's it's a beautiful, I'm like, beautiful place. When do doctors have time to rehearse? You know, you, if it's a passion, you're going you know, you, to find it. You know, it's like, when do you find time to go on the golf course or, mm-hmm. or travel? You, you do, you make time for the things that you're passionate about. Amen. My brand is called But God Situations. Oh, okay. Nobody but God, That's right? A- that's right. Do you have a but God situation that you could share with us? Something you've been through, something that you could say it was nobody but God. Um, I think the um, the but God situation probably has to do with my daughter. Okay. And when she was a baby, they um, the doctor, like just by chance, you know, she um, I had a, a housekeeper slash nanny who like, you know, um, was telling me like my daughter, you know, she was sick and whatnot. So I took her to the doctor. They did x-rays. And by the time we did all that, she was actually getting better. But the the um, doctor called and said, you know, we found something on the x-ray. And so she needs a CT. She needs an MRI. You know, of course, you know, we're freaking out. Yeah. And so she um, she had a tumor in her lung. Mm. Um, mm. So she had to have surgery. And, you know, Thank you, you know, God, you know, it was, she didn't need to have chemotherapy or anything like that. So once they, they removed that, but, you know, had, had she not had that pneumonia, we never would have found out about the tumor (sighs) and therefore gotten the problem taken care of. Yes, that is a but God situation. Well, that is, you know, nothing but God. And she's been uh, healthy and she's been healthy, yeah. thriving, feisty, and loud <laughs> since then. That, that she's the loudest one in the house. Uh, amen. Uh, I testify to that. Yes. Does your um, mother and father are they still here? Um, they both passed away. Um, oh, and, and and with my daughter, my mother had passed away like maybe six months before of lung cancer. Oh, wow. she was never a smoker. And so then when the doctor told me, like, your daughter has something on her lung, I was just Ooh, like, flipped your wig. It, yeah, it did, you know, it was, but, you know, I, I, even through all that, I had like a, a calm, a peace about it. I was like, you know, God, you know, this is all, you know, this housekeeper who, you know, kind of pointed it out and, you know, everything kind of felt I had a peace about it. I was like, I know it's going to be OK. And I just really held firm with that. Good. And and that's how it was. Good. That's good. Did your parents ever get a chance? Is it? Like something that they heard your music, um, or do they ever get a chance to hear the album or anything? My father did, because mm-hmm. at the time I, my mother knew I sung, but I, I wasn't really doing a lot. 
back then when she passed away. But my father, he did get a chance to, um, you know, hear me perform mm. a few times and mm. the CD and whatnot. So, yes. How was that for him? Well, he always loved to sing. Like, he, he came from a singing family. So mm. he was very proud of that. It made nice. him happy. Yeah. Nice. And what about your children? My children, they put up with me, but they, mm. <laughs> they've been very supportive. You okay. know, my daughter actually has a beautiful voice. I'm going to get her out there singing one day. Okay. Um, but, you know, they all, we are, we're supportive of one another. Yes. And that's what's a beautiful thing is. So Absolutely. Um, they, they, I've dragged them to see the little plays I did and to my shows and, and they're encouraging. So I have two final questions before we get out of here. One, what can one do to take care of themselves, their skin, things of that more better? What can they do? Okay. Particularly here in Las Vegas, number yes. one is dry and it's sunny. So um, just lots of uh, moisturizing products. You don't want to use a lot of things that have fragrance because usually that's, you mm. know, dries you out and makes you itchy. So, mm. you know, usually we recommend unscented um, products and sunscreen, particularly skin of color. People don't feel they need to use sunscreen, right. but it is important. Um, maybe not from the standpoint of skin cancer, even though it is possible, mm -hmm. but a lot of pigment alteration, a lot of times we're on medication, you know, like blood pressure medicine and stuff mm -hmm. that might be, you know, higher in, in, you know, African American yes. um, population yes. and medicines that make you more sun sensitive. Okay. So you want to make sure that you are protecting your skin. Okay. Um, my other question was, what do you have to say to the other women out there striving to be great. What are you telling them today? I would say, first of all, it's, it's never too late to fulfill your dream. Mm. You know, if you have something mm. in your heart, because you know, I'm no spring chicken, <laughs> but you know, so, no, no. <laughs> so things, you know, if you, if you keep working at it, you know, if it's in your heart, you do it. And you know, you, you stay true to what's inside of you. Mm -hmm. And it can happen. You know, don't give up on yourself. Nice. You know? That's good. Uh, when you said sunscreen for uh, African-Americans, what number do we get? I usually say 30, you know. Oh, 30. Yeah. Okay. Because I have no idea. I don't know what yeah. you Yeah, and a lot of products, you know, a lot of over-the-counter products have, you know, 25 or 30. And that's good. That's you know, good. basic protection. Yes. Okay. Well, we're coming to the end of Hot Seat with Isaac Jones <laughs> today on this beautiful Friday. You have you want to enjoy your weekend? Uh, it's my birthday weekend, so. Oh, hey. come on now. Okay. Yeah, Sunday's my birthday, right, so I'm going to have a good weekend. Happy birthday Yay. to you. Uh, happy yeah. birthday hey. to you. Happy birthday. It's like, no, shorty. It's, it's your birthday. Don't party like it's your birthday. Don't hey. no, party like it's your birthday. Good job. I like that. Congratulations. What you doing this weekend? What you doing? I'm actually going to do a road trip to L.A. Okay. You know, just kind of hang out at the beach. And contemplate my next stages in life. What are you doing? Uh, so look, this is what I do. I'm doing a event this tonight, mm -hmm. Code Seven. My people doing an R&B gathering, and then Saturday I have a water balloon fight fundraiser. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I was like, when are you leaving? But you're probably uh, leaving this morning. <laughs> T tomorrow. You don't morning want sometime. me in your water balloon fight. Why not? I want everybody there. We got to have fun. <laughs> Linda, Linda might be that ghetto kind of sister. Be all rough and everything. Uh -oh. Throw throw balloons yeah, can, and rocks Can we freeze in the water? Them. No, that's a rock. See? See? Linda. What I just say? I said, see, she might be little, have a little something in the water. I just said it. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, Remember, she's an engineer. She come up with some chemicals. Come up with they some. get on you and then they burn you or no, something. No, no, no. I wouldn't do that. Yeah, come on. Don't be a ninja turtle. No. <laughs> right. um, have the ooze falling out. So, at the end of the day, I do, um, you know, community gatherings. So it'd be nice if we can connect one time and make some things happen. So I'll get with you sooner or later. Absolutely. Uh, what would you like people to follow you at? Um, well, I'm on Ms. Linda Woodson on Instagram and Facebook. Okay. And yeah. Is that MZ or MS? MS. Miss Linda Woodson on Instagram and Facebook. Mm -hmm. All right. Make sure y'all check in. Listen to the music. If you like that smooth groove, that smooth jazz. You know what I mean? And um, she'll be performing October 3rd at the Smith's Center. Serenades of Life. Serenades of Life. Mm -hmm. Check it out. I'm sure they got tickets. You could look up Smith Center Vegas, and I'm sure it'll pop up. And also in November, you'll be at the Vegas. November 27th at the Nevada Room, which is in Commercial Center. Nevada Room. Yeah. Dope. All right, y'all. So I got Foodie Flies. Um, 
I want to make sure everybody know what's happening with Foodie Flies. Go get that good food. Um, they do catering. They do infused cannabis. Uh, they got seafood broils. They have um, delivery and pickup, um, meal preps, private dinners, and much more. It's the comfort food made with love. So um, they're located for the Apache and Flamingo for pickup or delivery available. 725-300-2535. That's 725-300-2535. You can email foodiefliescatering at gmail.com. That's F-O-O-D-Y-F-L-Y-Z catering. And also on Facebook is Foodie Flies Catering. And on Instagram is Foodie Flies. Okay? F-O-O-D-Y-F-L-Y-Z catering. All right? So, 725-300-2535. You can actually go get you some good food. It looks amazing. It tastes amazing. I've had the food myself. Thank you for sponsoring Foodie Flies. Hot Seat with Icy Jones. We truly appreciate you right here on Room Service Radio. We got to let y'all go. We'll see y'all next week. Listen, you already know, man, I'm live 3 to 5 Tuesday, kicking it with Jones and Skinny. You don't want to miss those conversations. We talk about the Vegas culture and what we got going on. Plus, you know, you're going to get a good, you know, update on what happened this weekend. Friday, we got the um, Flight Fridays with Code 7, Hip Hop with Lou, uh, Pilot Talk by Tizzle. Uh, we got, um, what is it, uh, Code 7, but they do another another podcast and it just slipped my mind but they'll be actually hosting i can't believe it views from the seven thank you views from the seven will be hosting and making it happen um pressure my family is another partner as well so that's tonight 9 p.m all right all information is on our pages you can follow skinny seven skinny junior 777 at gmail but look the tickets are sold out now you missed out all the wristbands gone, all right? And on Saturday, I'm looking for everybody to come out to Gilcrease Brothers Park out there in Centennial Hills. Bring your water balloons. Bring your water guns. It's the end of summer. Let's have fun, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. So the sun going to be going down. So it won't be extremely hot, but we're going to have extreme fun. We got uh, 200 hot dogs and sausage links for free. Uh, we got a dessert vendor, which is uh, Creations. Um, she got some dope, dope, delicious, delicious desserts. I'm trying to tell you, like the cake in a jar. You know what I mean? The little cupcakes, uh, little drizzle, strawberry. Come on, man. So, of course, those will be for uh, purchase. Um, and I'm thankful that the uh, the vendor said, hey, yes, I will agree to the 15% back to Camp of God. So it is a fundraiser so I can attain my follow 1C3 nonprofit status, okay, for Camp of God. Y'all know the vision. We do trap for the homeless once a month, giving back to the community. So if you want to bring gently used clothes, um, we need socks, we need shoes, undergarments, um, hygiene products. If you want to bring those things there, it will go towards traffic for the homeless like we do every month. GMB in the building. GMB. All right. So once again, that is Saturday. Gilcrease Brothers Park, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Water Balloon Fight Fundraiser. We in the building. Thank you to Modern Word Ministry for being an actual um, a sponsor as well. And so much, so many more. Sister Soul Food. Um, Hits Music Group, um, Fast Money Music Group, um, man, Sweet Life, um, man, it's like seven, eight of us. So I appreciate y'all. Please come out. Please come have fun. And please be armed with your water weapons. All right. We out of here. God bless y'all. Love y'all. Hot see what I see. Jones right here on Room Service Radio.